Hey there, Sean. I'm going to close my little thing here. It's a bit messy. Um, I hope you're doing well. I'm going to do the uh, Talk Tuesday actually pretty quick for Matthew chapter 12. And I hope you like it. I'm going to kind of fly through it. Now, when you look at Matthew chapter 12 for a Young Life Talk, uh, it might not jump out at you as a great chapter. Uh, to try to figure out, you know, what story might I do in a club talk. And, um, I mean, there are some difficult ones. It's a lot about the Sabbath. It's a lot about Old Testament prophecy, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, tree is known by its fruit, sign of Jonah, um, unclean spirits, lots of things that we just normally don't talk a lot about in Young Life, Wildlife, um, Young Life, Capernaum, uh, college. But I think that this is just another example of where we should look at this and say, how does this chapter relate to the gospel? I have an idea of what the gospel is. I talk about the gospel um, in young life all the time. What does this actually tell us? So um, I picked a passage out, which I think shows maybe a dynamic of the gospel that we don't normally highlight. And uh, so hopefully you find it helpful. If not, no worries. Um, but I know we're doing this talk in my club on Monday, so here we go. Um, the passage that I chose is verse 9 through 14. It's the story of Jesus healing the man with a, a withered hand. And there's really two things that jump out in this, page, uh, in this passage that are relevant, I think, about the gospel and what we might say in a club talk. And the first thing is obviously that Jesus heals the man's hand. So this tells us about Jesus' nature, that he's divine. He's not just a mere man, that he is also God. So that's the first one. Now that's the obvious one, and we should keep telling people about how Jesus is unique. His healings um, show us not just that he's a healer, but he shows us that he's God himself. It's the second part that I think really adds the unique dynamic um, that we probably don't talk a lot about. And I had to kind of study it a bit to just try to figure out what was going on there. And it is this. The second part is that Jesus could have waited until after the Sabbath to heal him, but he doesn't wait. He decides that this man is a priority. So let me, I'll just break it down a little bit, explain it. But um, what is going on here is that there are some laws, and I'll get to it in a moment, where uh, they knew from the Old Testament that they couldn't work on the Sabbath, and the Old Testament discusses quite a bit about what the Sabbath is about. Um, but in Jesus' time, the, the Pharisees and the experts of the religious law had determined uh, a precise list. In fact, they listed 39 different activities that you couldn't do on the Sabbath. Well, healing actually wasn't on that list. So technically speaking, Jesus could have healed, but it was implied that healing could have been put off. In fact, um, what was implied was uh, if it wasn't an absolute emergency, um, like a, what I'm going to term like a 911 emergency, um, then you may as well wait until the next day to do it. And in fact, healing would have been a kind of a work that could have waited in the situation. So just wait, Jesus. If you want to heal, wait until the next day. And so it is an example in this passage where they're trying to trick him and trying to make Jesus um, kind of, you know, obviously be in the wrong and so that they can just further persecute him and kill him. Well, Jesus didn't wait, but he wanted to show that God's heart and Jesus' um, heart is gives attention and priori priority to us, even when we're not in an emergency situation, even when we're not in an extreme case, even when we're not in a 911 uh, kind of scenario. Jesus' compassioning priority for us is for every person, um, not just when maybe when we're in just the wildest situation or maybe if we look at other people and say, you know, they clearly need Jesus or um, I know there's been one time when, man, I really needed him. You know, we all need him and all the time. And this story is a story of Jesus saying, I'm not going to wait until the Sabbath is over. You matter to me right now. Let's, uh, you know, step into this. I want to step into your life now. Um, we don't need to wait. Um, so a couple possible mere, uh, points here. First off, Jesus is no mere man. Uh, he healed the man's hand. He's truly God. Second is that God wants to work in all of our lives, all of the time, not just when we're in a really wild, crazy, urgent um, situation like a 911 situation. Um, God wants to touch our lives. God wants to work in our lives all the time. Um, we are urgent all the time to God. I know it might not always feel that way and God might not always do what we want, but his heart is um, expressed in this story, the urgency of his care for us. What does this show us about Jesus? First off, that he can heal. Second, that he cares about our difficulties and challenges, even if they're not of the most extreme urgency. Um, he also 
Uh, it shows us that Jesus uh, can correct the religious experts who don't fully understand um, God's heart behind things. Um, also, it shows us that Jesus could have waited until the Sabbath was over, but he doesn't. He wants to make a point which communicates his heart. What does this have to do with our lives? Well, um, our lives are valuable. Um, Jesus declares that you are valuable. Um, and so this man, though he may not have been like kind of the top of the list for um you know, who Jesus may have needed to help right away. Um, it shows that uh, this man is valuable and that God wanted to work in his life, uh, even if maybe he wouldn't have been at the top of the list of um, those that should have received attention on the Sabbath. Uh, another one is that a lot of times I hear people say things like, oh, you know, um, my problems, I don't really want to talk about them. I don't want to be, a, you know, I don't want to be a big deal. Um, I don't really want to bother anyone with my things. And there is this thing that is within a lot of us um, that we kind of think, I'm not the most important person. My problems aren't the worst. I know people who seem more important than me. I know people who have big challenges than me, uh, more than me, don't worry about me. And it's a way of us putting ourselves in a category where we think that we're not God's priority. And this story is a great example of God communicating the opposite, which is we are God's priority. We might not be the most extreme case. I mean, at Young Life Camp, we hear this all the time. We put kind of stories up front of testimonies that are like just these really wild stories. And, and it's great to hear about God's power. But you, there's a bunch of people sitting in the crowd who are going, I've never experienced anything like that. Maybe God only works in people who have really just wild experiences. I feel a bit more normal. I'm kind of a more of a middle of the pack kind of person. And this story, I think, communicates God's heart for everyone an urgent heart for everyone, not just like, oh, I'll get to you eventually. You matter to me right now. You are my sole focus. Um, so anyway, when we're in this situation, and you might, it might be you, or it might be some of your club kids, oh, don't worry about me, I'm fine. My, my problems aren't that big of a deal, that sort of thing. Um, this story is for us um, who sometimes feel like that. Now with one little, uh, I want, do want to add one little uh, kind of adjustment into that, not adjustment to change it, but make sure that you understand it in this light, which is this communicates God's heart for us, the way that he looks at us, which is we are always his priority and his care. He's a, we are at the top of his list. Yet does, God doesn't always do what we want when we want, okay? So don't get those two confused. God's heart and care for us with the, the order in which maybe he attends to our needs. His uh, timing is mysterious. And in fact, if you just look a little bit further um, in this chapter, um, in verse in chapter 12, verse 38 and 39, it's when the scribes and the Pharisees, they say, we wish, we want, and they demanded a sign from Jesus. And then Jesus goes on to say, it's an adulterous generation that demands a sign. No sign will be given to you except for the sign of Jonah. And so um, while this story does communicate God's urgent, care and focus and attention for all of us, even if we don't seem like we're on the extreme 911 kind of cases, um, it doesn't mean that necessarily he'll come in and step in and, and heal our lives like we want to right away. Um, though we touch the hand, the man's hand and, uh, and it was healed right away, um, that doesn't always happen. And Jesus, just a you know, few sentences later, um, is describing that scenario um, to the Pharisees. Uh, who are demanding a sign. Anyway, I'll move on from there. A couple technical details, and it's actually going to be a pretty short one. Um, I'll wrap it up in just a moment, but um, it talks about a synagogue in verse 9, and uh, a synagogue is just basically a local Jewish place of worship, um, and uh, uh, it would have been found in any town that had, I think there's a technical number, I think it's if it had more than 12 adult Jewish males, then there needed to be a synagogue by law, something like that. Um, so they're, they're scattered all over. In other words, it's kind of like the local church of, of the Jewish people. Um, but it would be a temple, a worship, a place of worship. Um, then, uh, or in today's modern terms, sorry. Then there's the withered hand. Now, technically in there, it doesn't say withered. It says a dried out hand. And we don't know what that means exactly. And it also could have been more than just the hand. It could have been the entire arm. But what we do know from this um, kind of, physical ailment was it wasn't urgent. Um, this wasn't like uh, the type of thing that by the end of the day he would have died um, because of it. It was a non-urgent issue that he had dealt with. Definitely difficult, challenging, frustrating, all of those, but it was not in the urgent category. So that's probably the most important part that what we need to know about this withered hand. Um, it talks about the Sabbath 
And, you know, just quickly in a Young Life talk or in a club talk, I would just say, you know, that's basically their day that they worship God. Some people worship God on Saturdays, uh, or I'm sorry, on Sundays. Other people do on um, Saturdays, which was the Jewish day when they would worship God. Um, and so uh, you could just kind of point out that that was their day to go to church or to worship, uh, to kind of put it in local terms. Um, and then the more kind of technical point, and I have it detailed in the sheet, which is when it says that it was, was it lawful for them to heal on the Sabbath? And that basically, I have an explanation there, but um, with the healing there, because it wasn't absolutely urgent, the Old Testament didn't uh, rule it out. Neither did the 39 laws that the Pharisees and the religious leaders um, had described. That didn't rule it out. But because it was um, not urgent and healing still felt like a bit of work, um, it, it, they were trying to test Jesus's um, take on 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 what that meant, and um, so so it's it's just uh, the real emphasis there. I think the real point to be gleaned for a club talk is that um, Jesus healed even though it wasn't urgent, and even though he was going to be judged by these people and misunderstood. Um, it just shows how important the person was to Jesus. Um, some illustrations. I don't have any great ones for this. Um, you could take, you could look on Google and find a picture of someone's hand that's kind of, you know, withered or struggled or paralyzed, um, or an arm. I don't know how far that might go, but you might, might kind of say, Hey, we don't know what it'll look like. It could look like this. That might have someone kind of look up from their phone or catch their attention. And then the last one would be that, uh, you could have just like a huge sign that says, uh, 911 on it and say, you know, a lot of times we think that God, that Jesus is only concerned or maybe active in situations that seem like emergencies, that seem like top priorities, that seem like um, what you would call 911 for, maybe like danger, death, emergency. Um, and you know what? Jesus isn't only concerned with that. Um, 911 is just such kind of like an attention grabbing uh, number and sign, and we all know what that means. It means like urgent, urgent, urgent. And we could communicate to them that God's heart for them is all of that. God's heart for all of us is urgent, 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 even if we don't think we are. Um, so God's heart and care for us is um, incredible. And uh, uh, we want to communicate that to our friends. So anyway, I hope those are some helpful ideas about how you might be able to communicate a little section of scripture in Matthew 12 uh, to some of our friends. But um, I hope that you get a lot out of this passage if you look at it on your own and that there's uh, a lot of good work going on in your local club. So many blessings on all of you. Talk to you later. Bye.